All right, hey guys, what's going on? I'm Mash. I'm Zero. And we're here at Long Island Retro Expo's Festival of Games, just basically their winter version of the August convention that they threw here. It's a very similar feel. Uh, it does have a Christmas theme to it. That's why we've got our Christmas hats on. That's right. But uh, yeah, we just want to talk about it a little bit, like we usually do. So uh, Zero, why don't you start off with some of your thoughts? Sure thing, Mash. So. I said this before back in August when we first came to LA Retro for the first time finally this year um, that I felt like I was right at home because it's just video games, video games, video games, aircraft, video games, and aerospace stuff. So yes, I love it here. This place is amazing. I used to be a, a tour guide at a museum back in the day. Uh, at, at an aircraft carrier. So I'm used to being around aircraft. I'm used to being around spaceships and space artifacts and stuff like that. And then just mixing it all with video games. Hell yeah, I've had a blast today. Heck, uh, Mesh, you and I played freaking Street Fighter Alpha 3 and you finally started getting uh, the hang of it, especially using uh, uh, Vism. Holy crap, you started really giving me the creeps there, man. Like, damn. Uh, a bunch of old arcade games. Hell, it feels like you bought, you're walking into an 80s arcade room or arcade or arcade establishment. It's freaking awesome. And then, of course, trying out some uh, winter themed games here at uh, uh, Festival of Games uh, because it's basically Christmas themed, basically winter themed. There was a bunch of uh, fan mods for for games like Sonic games, Marvel, Marvel games, Doom, Duke Nukem. I was really hoping to play Nights Into Dreams because if you play it with the clock set on December 25th, you can basically play the Christmas themed version of it. However, they didn't have it today, so eh, whatever. You win some, you lose some, it's all good. And then of course we entered a tournament today, which was a lot of fun. You wanna talk about that? Yeah, so we entered a Street Fighter II Turbo tournament. Uh, it's not really what we came here for. If we knew that that was gonna happen, then I would definitely have brought my stick because I wasn't prepared for it. Uh, but it was actually kind of exciting. It was the first time I know you said that you were in a tournament. I haven't been in a tournament probably another like five or six months or so. And that was pretty cool. Always enjoy it. What's nice about LA Retro too is that there are some of those other aspects that you get at like a convention, like tournaments, uh, like panels. There are some panels. There have been some cool guests here, like just walking around, not necessarily as a guest, but just kind of coming to experience it because they recognize that this brand, this organization that puts these events together, like they do some really cool work. On the topic of museums and just putting video games in museums, I'm gonna reiterate what I said in in, in our Long Island Retro video, or I may have forgotten and I meant to say it, but this reminds me of another event called IndieCade East, which was an uh, offshoot of the main IndieCade in California, except that in New York, it took place in MOMI, the Museum of the Moving Image. So instead of being surrounded by aircraft, planes, and also fire trucks, uh, you were surrounded by movie stuff. Uh, there's like Muppets, Jim Henson, you know, cameras, all these kind of like studio equipment, memorabilia from Eddie Murphy and Robin Williams movies so it definitely feels to me like IndieCade which means so much to me because we don't have IndieCade East anymore unfortunately they don't put those events together so having something like this like I will come out every single time and just the selection of games that they have both at this and at Long Island Retro I guess we'll call it Prime uh fantastic and we also bought a couple of things because that's kind of what we do sometimes I guess I'll start since I already got the mic so we we saw in the vendors area actually someone that we interviewed almost like a month ago at this point, Chris Pinion from the uh, clear that made the clear to decks board game was actually there, and I got the Sailors and Scoundrels expansion pack. Now, if you don't remember, he mentioned this in our video. If you didn't get a chance to check it out, this was an expansion pack where he's actually adding real historical figures, you know, pirates like real pirates into the game, real naval characters historical figures so it was pretty cool that again to get my hands on this yeah crispy games co that was pretty dope i also got a copy of panzer dragoon which is the playable preview not demo preview 
Uh, that's actually courtesy of Zero, so thank you very much. So we're gonna test this out on my Saturn uh, pretty soon and just kind of take a look at it. I know, I know Panzer Dragoon is a really rare retro game. It's hard to come by. Anytime I've seen it, it's been like crazy expensive in price. We got this for five bucks. So, I mean, maybe we only get to play like a level, but hey, that's not too bad. And last but not least, I didn't get too many things, but I did also get, <laughs> I got something that meant a lot to me personally, which was a copy of Zelda for the NES. And it's Zelda 2. And, uh, my really my, my good friend, my close friend, Joe, uh, got me into speedrunning, actually speedrun Zelda 2. And when I got to meet him, he brought a copy of his cart because he wanted to play it over there too. So I finally have a copy. However, you'll notice that, wow, that's an incredible deal on an NES cart copy of uh, Zelda 2, isn't it? Well, it is because there's a giant thing. <laughs> there's a giant hole at the very bottom of it. I'm gonna see if I can't maybe get that fixed, get it swapped or uh, have it like patched up somehow. I feel like I feel like my buddy Paul might know a thing or two. Maybe we could 3D print something. I don't know, but I still have a copy of Zelda 2 now. It's only 10 bucks. It's the gold cart and I'm pretty stoked about it. I am hopeful i'm hoping that this does actually work uh because i can play some nes games so yeah this year at festival games i finally got a copy of zelda 2 and that was all for me so i'm just gonna throw it over to zero all right now i didn't end up getting much uh i had planned to buy only two things so i brought money to buy only two things but i ended up getting a little bit more than what i uh, initially thought i would now the first thing i want to talk about is the vendor is the vendor that we talked with uh game changer mods now these two guys mainly focus on modding old game boys so you have the game boy the game boy color and of course the gba and their mods look fantastic we did an awesome interview with them you guys can watch that uh in the tag that we have up here and also uh they were very gracious enough to give us their book that they published called game boy modding now, MASH and I were kind of thrown back because we're not expecting any of this kind of stuff. And they were very, very, very generous. And uh, in the interview, we, we actually go over a little bit as to what's in this book, mainly talking about the history of the Game Boy, the history of games as well. And then also the kind of different mods you can do with the Game Boy with some awesome illustrations. Definitely going to be reading through it. Uh, I'm very excited to have this. Thank you guys, by the way, for this awesome book. Yeah, please make sure to check out Game Changers underscore mods uh, on YouTube and of course on their social medias. Now, I also wanted to get something from their booth. Um, however, they really only had a bunch of uh, import games from Japan. So I figured, all right, let's get a game that MASH and I can play that doesn't have a lot of Japanese writing in it. I can't read that much Japanese yet. So I went ahead and got a copy of Super Donkey Kong for the Game Boy Advance. Uh, if I remember correctly, MASH has one of those awesome Retron 5 consoles that can play these HD on a TV. So we might be able to show this off sometime in the future. All right, and the last booth we visited here was Classic Game Connection. Now, you guys know me, I'm a big PlayStation fan. I was looking mainly for PlayStation 1 games. Didn't really find many PS1 games that I was interested in. I nearly got a copy of Crash Bandicoot 2 complete in box with a holographic game manual. Remember, remember that, MASH? I showed you that thing and I'm just like, oh, I almost got it, but I held back. But when I got to Classic Game Connection, I saw a game made by a company that I know very well that I just had to have. Enterbrain is one of those companies that makes game making games, if that makes any sense. Any of you who's ever used a RPG Maker will know that company, me included. Now, being very familiar with Enterbrain and having created some fan RPGs in the past, seeing a game called Fighter Maker 2 really caught my eye. I had no idea this game existed. Created by the same company, Enterbrain, you can make your own fighting game with this. After Googling this game real quick and seeing that it got pretty decent scores, I said, all right, that's it, I'm grabbing this. We're big fighting game fans here. This past summer, we play, we spent a whole month in July just playing fighting games, different types of ones. Now we can make our own. This is gonna be amazing. I can't wait to recreate our characters in this game and just go at it with each other. Like in real life. Indeed, yeah, just like in real life. This is gonna be a lot of fun. So yeah, that was Festival of Games 2022 in a nutshell. 
Uh, really cool experience. Again, there's so much for you to do here as a retro fan, even as someone that's more that's more interested in modern games, uh, more modern consoles and stuff. They definitely have something for you here. And even if they don't, you could just come look at a bunch of cool planes. Um, but yeah, we enjoyed ourselves. Uh, we hope that you guys enjoyed watching this video. That's right, everyone. If you did enjoy this video, please make sure to slap that like button. Make sure to mash the subscribe button and let us know down in the comments below. Which of the games that we showed off in this video did you like the best? Which of the items that we got in this convention did you like the best? Let us know. Also, real quick, we wanted to throw out a thank you to our buddy Kugla GK for providing us with the mic flag that you see here that's got our little logo on it. Thank you so much, guys. Make sure to check out Real Gamakun, aka Kugla GK. And until the next convention that we go to, we'll see you next time. Goodbye, everybody. Take care.